Hello, Tom from Every Step Calculus, Every Step Physics dot com. Um, this lady here is a graduate of MIT. Her name is Nancy, and she's on YouTube. She's one of my favorite go-to. She she teaches this stuff like I do, which is elementary for you folks and for me too, coming into calculus or any of these types of things, whereby explains it to the people that don't know anything, you know, and other professors leave off simple steps that we don't really know about, but she won't do that. So she's good, and then Patrick JMT is another one of my favorites. So anyways, I'm going to show you how this works on my calculator. Notice with the calculator here, you buy my program and load them in here, you have them for the rest of your life. Here, even though as great as this is, you have to memorize this and know this for your test, but here it's a calculator of of uh, always in your possession if you have it and don't sell it then you never know what's going to happen in the future that you might need calculus and physics answers to these problems okay let me show you how this works on my calculator we index 8 to get to the manual I'm already at complete the square here I'll highlight it so you can see it better calculus complete the square go there and press enter and we're going to enter the function. You have to press alpha first in my programs to enter the function. And these are the entry lines here, OK? Alpha x squared. I have to go slow, or otherwise the simulator will mess up. Plus 6 times x minus seven equals zero. I have to press right in the middle of these things, otherwise it'll mess up. Press enter. I always show you what you've entered here is x squared plus six x minus seven equals zero. And I give you a chance to change it in case you made a mistake, but it's it's good. So there's a process of doing these. You take the constant here and throw it to the right side. Here we've done that. Change the sign, of course. <coughs> and we complete the square. We take half of the middle term here, half of the 6, and square it, which I show you here. And then I calculate it here. And, of course, 3 squared is 9, so right down here is the you write all this stuff in your paper so you look like a genius during your test or whatever. And then we add the 2 on the right side. We get 16. x squared plus 6x plus 9 equals 16. We put it in proper form here. x plus 3 equals 16. Take the square root of both sides. Turns out to be x plus 3 equals plus or minus 4. And then we do the algebraic computation, computations of this. And at plus 4, x equals 1. At minus 4, x equals minus 7. Now I'm going to choose number 3 here, get out of here, and I'm going to go back to the home screen of the calculator. I'm going to press F8 to clear this index 8 out of here clear the screen by pressing F18 and then I'm going to press F2 here and, we're, and you notice these options here one is solver we're going to use that we can press one or scroll to it and we're going to enter the function you don't have to press alpha when you put us when you use the calculator's home screen um, so we're going to enter the function x squared plus 6 times x minus 7 equals 0. And then you always have to put a comma because you're asking the to solve it for x. So you need to put a comma x in here. Close off the parentheses press enter and you can see x equals minus 7 or x equals 1 okay so remember that you can 
use the calculator to solve these problems which i do a million times of course on my programs stuff i'm just using all the calculator functions in my programs and incidentally mit designed this whole fabulous program that i've been using for thirty years and uh... then t i bought it or stole it i don't know which one they did and put it in their system of the ti calculators <coughs> so let's go back to the um, home screen here let's let's clear the screen here we're going to clear the entry line here with clear here we're going to press second and variable link here I want to put index 8 into the calculator again, the home screen. You can type it in using second alpha, which goes to the second register and puts in letters rather than numbers. But I like to do it this way, it's a little bit quicker. Put the right parentheses in, which tells the calculator you want to do a program. And let's now we're out of complete square, so we have to scroll down to it because that's what we're trying to find is complete the square. There it is there. And we're going to enter the function of here two times. So we have to press alpha again. Two times x squared minus 10 times x minus 3 equals 0. And I say that one's OK. Press Enter. as busy as loading the program and we, we put the constant on the right side again okay and we divide both sides by two because we're getting rid of the two here in the front and so we divide everything by two come up with x squared minus 5x equals three halves we complete the square by taking half of the middle term here, minus 5 divided by 2, and square it, and then add that to the right side here, 2 of the equal sign, to whatever you have here. And then, of course, we do the squaring 5 halves is 25 fourths. All right. Press Enter. We add the right side using a common denominator, 31 fourths. And we put it to original form here. X minus 5 has squared equals 31 over 4. Square both sides. Turns out to be X minus 5 halves equals square root of 31 over 4. We do a square root of that whole thing. It turns out to be 31 over 2. Five. Yeah, that's the answer. So you can go to solver again. I'm going to go to the main menu again and put another problem in and put in this one here, number three. Press alpha minus x. Squared minus six times x plus seven equals zero. Now, of course, in real life, you might have this, be, you know. 9 or 12 or whatever they give you in this problem and it'll, it'll program will do okay. take that into consideration too rather than just be zero I say it's okay and of course
course, here it is. We're going to move the constant to the other side, changing the sign, of course. And in this case, we're going to divide by minus 1 all through the problem here. And of course, when we simplify it, it turns out to be here. We add the 7 and the 0, we get 7. So this is the answer to all of this. We complete the square half of the middle term here. 6 over 2 is squared. Add it to the other side, 2, on the other side of the equal sign. Of course, 6 over 2 is equal to 3 squared. We're going to do this. Here's, here's 9 and 7. So we're going to, and of course, that equals a 16. We put it in proper form here. x plus 3 squared equals 16. And plus or minus 4, square root of 60. We square root both sides. x plus 3 equals plus or minus 4. And we get minus 7, or x equals 1. Pretty neat, huh? EverystepCalculus.com. Go to my site. There's a million problems in here, of course, in the menu, the main menu. You can see arc length, arc tangent, arc everything, whatever you want in here is it, whatever you would be in a test, this is in the menu. And you go right to it. I don't teach this stuff. I show you how to do it. This is the math translator, just like you had a translator for your Chinese or Spanish language. This is the translator for physics and and I'm the only one that does this in the world, so it's another thing to think about. And you'll have them for the rest of your life. So buy my program, load them in here, and I'll help you with whatever you can. You can call me or send me your test problems. I'll show you how it works on your tests or whatever. Get your homework done quickly and stuff. And the uh, idea is to pass the tests and get the heck out of there never to use it again. Even if you become an engineer, you'll never use calculus, OK? So. Uh, good luck with your pro with your uh, classes and have a good one.